China is the largest country in Southeast Asia. It is a crowded land. Nearly 500 million people live in its fertile valleys and plains. In the southern part of China is one of the great farming regions of the world, the Sea Valley. The broad level floor of this valley farmland is more than a thousand miles long. High barren hills border the valley and protect our crops from the cold winter winds of North Asia. A warm, rainy climate enables our farmers to grow the chief food of the Chinese people, rice. Gip village is one of the many small farming communities of the Sea Valley. The homes in our village are built of packed earth with roofs of straw. In the large courtyard, we keep a few farm animals and store our crops. Chinese farmers always live close together in crowded villages. In this way, we save land on which food can be grown. In every Chinese village, great stacks of straw line the streets and fill the courtyard. We save this straw from our rice and other crops after the part which we eat has been taken away. In the Sea Valley, straw is the fuel we use for nearly all our cooking. In North China, where the winters are cold, Farmers also burn it to heat their homes. Nearly all the clothing worn in South China is made of cotton. Because our winters are mild, we do not need heavier clothes to keep us warm. Like most of the boys in our village, Kim makes many of his own toys. The shuttlecock is used in our most popular Chinese game. It is Kim's job at noon to carry a hot lunch to those of his family who work in the field. Chinese farmers cannot spare time from their work to come home in the middle of the day. Our children learn early to carry baskets or buckets hung at either end of a long shoulder pole. In the farming regions of China, nearly everything is carried in this way. The paths between our fields are narrow, for Chinese farmers need every bit of their land for growing crops. Millions of small, carefully tilled fields divide our Great Valley Basin. So many people in China are farmers that most of us can have only a few acres of land. The farmers of Yip village use the same kinds of tools which Chinese farmers have used for thousands of years. Modern farm machinery would not be practical on our small strips of land. From early morning until dark, men, women, and children work in our fields. Kim's family are always hungry when he arrives with lunch. The coolest place for their meal is beneath the trees at the edge of the field. Most of the Chinese people have only a simple bowl of rice for their lunch, eaten quickly with our traditional chopsticks. Rice is the most nourishing food we grow. It is eaten with all our meals, as bread is eaten in other lands. <laughs> because our noonday sun is very hot, the farmers protect themselves with broad hats of woven bamboo. On the sandy soil beside our paths, soybeans are grown. We use them mainly to make a sauce for our meal. Growing rice is hard work. Before they can plant their crops, our farmers spend many days pumping water onto the land or rice will only grow in a flooded field. A new crop of rice is planted as soon as the last crop has been cleared away. In the warm, wet climate of South China, 
the same piece of land will often yield two harvests a year. With the planting of his crop, the rice farmer's work has only begun. For many months, as the young rice plants grow to harvest, they will have to be hoed daily, supplied with water and fertilizer, and carefully weeded. Although our children share in the work of the village, they often have time for play. In the farming regions of China, children spend many hours preparing for our great yearly festival. Before he can join his friends, however, Kim has one more job to do. Kim's grandmother cares for the family silkworms day and night. It is difficult work, for the least shock will stop them from growing. Silkworms are raised in nearly all the farming villages of South China. The small balls of silk which they spin are sold to cloth makers in our great city of Canton. The silkworms must be fed many times every day. At each feeding hour, Kim brings them a basket of leaves from his family's mulberry tree. These leaves are the only food which silkworms eat and they must be freshly picked. Kim is one of the boys who will do the lion dance in our coming festival. Many people in China believe that this ancient dance will help to ensure a good harvest. Farmers of Gip village work very hard to get as large a crop as they can. From many centuries of experience, they have learned the best ways to farm their land. But because their fields are small, the crops are small, and our farmers make only a bare living. They are usually very poor. Water buffaloes are the chief work animals in South China. Their backs must be kept damp or the heat will make them uncomfortable. Although our farmers raise water buffaloes to share their work in the fields, there are no beef or dairy cattle in Gip village. The sea valley is so crowded that we have little land to spare for pasture. We do raise ducks and other fowl for they can be fed on scraps from our kitchen. Rice is the main food of our farmers and their families. Kim's mother often prepares rice cakes by soaking the kernels in water and grinding them to a paste. At one end of the farmhouse is a kitchen shed with a brick stove inside. One of Kim's sisters feeds dried straw into the stove while the meal is being prepared. Sweet potatoes are eaten in many parts of China. The people of Yip village grow them in dry sandy ground which cannot be used for rice. In our stoves, the plant fuel burns so quickly that stoking the fire keeps Kim's sister steadily busy. Drinking water in the sea valley comes from the same streams which are used to flood our rice fields. The water is always boiled to make it safe for drinking. At the evening meal, Kim's whole family is together for the first time since early morning. Like most Chinese families, it is very large. 
At dinner, everyone has his own bowl of rice. Vegetables and bits of meat are added from the dishes on the table. To season our meals, we use salt and the sauce we have made from our soybeans. Farmers in the Sea Valley take good care of their water buffaloes. These strong, patient animals are only used in the southern part of China. In the north, where it is too cold and dry for the water buffalo, oxen are the common work animals. At night, the families of Gip village usually stay in their homes and play games. Sometimes one of the neighbors, a musician, visits Kim's family and brings his lute. Kim does not take part in the game. He is learning to write, and the evenings are his only time for practice. Each letter of the Chinese alphabet is a whole word, and there are many thousands of letters which Kim must learn to form with his brush. At bedtime, Kim's grandmother lights incense on the family altar. The Chinese people burn incense in reverence for their ancestors. We believe that the spirits of those who have died are still with us and that they may protect us from harm. A part of the vegetable crop of Yip village is often sent to the markets in Canton. In this way, our farmers earn money to buy things which they cannot grow or make themselves. In the early mornings during our vegetable harvest, the farmers load their baskets with the vegetables and other products of our valley farmland. In one of the baskets, Kim puts the shuttlecock, which he is taking along as a gift for a friend. The crops which our farmers raise for the city market must be carried overland to a shipping port on one of the canals in our region. There they will be loaded on boats and taken to Canton. In rural China, we have few roads and hardly any horses or trucks. The farmers carry almost everything themselves. With a strong bamboo shoulder pole, many of our people can carry more than a hundred pounds swiftly for long distances. The carriers usually move along in a rolling trot, swinging their loads from side to side. In this way, they make the weight on their shoulders less tiring. About a mile away from Gip village is the town of Shapui. Like all of the larger towns and cities of China, Shapui has great ornamental gates. These gates were part of the high walls which protected the town from bandits many years ago. Shapui is built on the bank of a wide canal, one of the many waterways which connect our Sea Valley farmland with Canton. Because it is near the canal, Shapui has many small outdoor factories which supply the shops in Canton. At one of these factories, baskets and light furniture are made from a strong vine called rattan. Rattan grows in many parts of South China and throughout the warmer regions of the Orient.
The traders from Canton travel in small boats called sampans. Many of these traders live entirely on their boats. In our crowded country, millions of people have no homes but their sampans. Kim's family know the sampan people well, for they have traded together for many years. Kim made the shuttlecock for one of his sampan friends. Through their dealings with the traders, our farmers learn of events in other parts of China and in the rest of the world. The people of Gip village get nearly all their news in this way, for we have no radio or newspaper. The visit to the sampan cannot be long, for Kim and his family must return to their work on the farm. The sampan people also have little time to spare. They must get the vegetables to the city market while they are still fresh. The sampan returns to Canton along one of China's many hundreds of canals. Most of these canals were built centuries ago. They are still the basic means of travel in many parts of China. Many canals in our region join the Pearl River, which leads to Canton. When a sampan is heavily loaded, even the children must help to drive it through the water. The people who trade on our rivers and canals are used to hard work. For many centuries, their small sampans have carried the products of our great Sea Valley farmland to the millions of people who live in the cities of South China. <laughs> <laughs>